Do not hasten to bid me adieu. Just... All right. What are you doing in here? Why don't you rest in that wing while you got a chance? Well, it's not that I miss the place. I just don't see how you'd get along without me. Hank, see if Smitty's in yet. Yeah, I'm here, Chief. Romack's here, too. Romack? Morning, Chief. You're looking mighty chipper this morning. Come in, boys. He was to the mayor's house last night to one of them functions. Oh, no. That mayor's wife can think up more tomfoolery to keep us busy. Sam. If you don't mind, Chief, I'll just stand. Mrs. Richards and I attended a party at Mayor Adams' home last night. We heard about it. A decision was reached to promote a civic betterment program. Civic betterment? What's that? George, you know what civic betterment is. No. Remember those bird baths the mayor's wife had put in? <laughs> We've got the cleanest birds in Colorado Territory. But the birds never used them. Never mind that. A statue is to be erected to honor Colonel Slough. Who? Colonel Slough. He led the forces of the first Colorado to victory at the Battle of Pigeon's Ranch. Chief, how do we fit into this? I can't even whittle do good. You don't have to make the statue. The Denver Theatrical Group plans to run a play to raise the money. Now, all the city employees are going to be 100% behind this program. I've promised full cooperation from this department. Now, I'd say that was downright generous of you, Chief. Now, why don't you boys run over to the mayor's home? Mrs. Adams will tell you what she wants done. <laughs> They must have heard him. Well, George, looks like it's up to you. Oh, no, Smitty. Why, you're such a smooth talker with those high-class females. I wouldn't know what to say. Well, they'll do the talking. Oh, but you wouldn't want to take on a poor helpless invalid like me, would you, Smitty? Yeah. Well, uh... I'll tell you what I'll do, George. I'll flip you for it. Well, all right. Call it. Flip it first. Tails. Best two out of three? Gwine to run all night, gwine to run all day. I bet my money on a bobtail nag, somebody bet on the bay. All oh, the mayor's wife sing this song, do-da, do-da. Little old Smitty goes running along, all oh, do-da day. He's gwine to run all night, gwine to run all day. I bet my money on a bobtail nag, somebody bet on the bay. Adams was just leaving for his office as I rode up. Our mayor's not a bad sort, as politicians go, but somehow he gave you the feeling that you're just another X after his name on the ballot. Mrs. Adams gave me an order for the printer and the names of some of the other committee ladies to visit. This lady's aid work wasn't exactly my strong suit, but Mrs. Denton was in charge of putting on the play. The Dentons were our most influential citizens. Adams was the mayor of Denver, but Denton was the king. Who shall I say is calling? Mr. Smith. Hello. How nice of you to want to come and help us. Thank you. Well, Chief Richards deserves the thanks. Oh. Uh, Hannah, has Mr. Denton come down yet? No, ma'am. He must still be in his room. Oh, well, would you ask him to join us in the library, please? Yes, of course. Oh, excuse me. Uh, Hannah, uh, Mr. Plod is returning from San Francisco this afternoon. I'm sure he'll have dinner with us. Would you ask Cook to make one of her Lord Baltimore cakes for him? Yes, ma'am. Thanks. It's his favorite dessert. Uh, he must have fallen asleep while he was working. Is he? Yes, Mrs. Denton. 
and your husband dead. Oh, it's hard. The doctor warned him. It wasn't his heart. He was murdered. Keep here. Money? He always had money there. Mr. Denton isn't in his. Oh. Do you see Mr. Denton to her room, please, and send for the doctor? Down on the Denton property, Smitty. Thank you. Hang on. Three. George, take a look at this. Cattle ranches, race horses, mines, hotels. Didn't seem to have his finger in about every big business in the West. Who gets all that? The widow? She'll make out all right, but his younger brother Claude gets control of the whole shooting match. George. Yeah. Do you ever remember seeing any white clay like this around here? Can't say as I have, Smitty. Why? It didn't get in that Denton house by itself. Hey, look here. It fits my boot. Unfortunately, it fit most any boot. Oh. What a stagecoach. the new head of the Denton Enterprises. Quite a reception he's getting, too. Even Mayor Adams showed up. It's fallen my sad duty to bring you tragic news. Denver has suffered a great loss. What are you trying to tell me, Dan? Mr. Denton, your brother was found in the library of his home this morning. Murdered. Murdered? But who could? We don't know. We're making a thorough investigation. Excuse me, gentlemen. Sarah. Claude. Oh, isn't it terrible about Rex? Oh. <laughs> I think I'll join the delegation. You can rest assured every effort is being made to apprehend the murderer, Mr. Denton. I have instructed Chief Richards to concentrate all of his resources on the case. I know I can rely on you, Dan. I'll see you in the morning. Thank you. Chief Richards. Mr. Denton. Hello, Smith. I'm sorry about your brother. A dreadful thing. And to think I was sleeping peacefully only 60 miles away. Poor fellow. Smith, I want everything possible done to find the man who did it. We'll do everything we can. Yes, the mayor assured me of that. Feel free to call on me for anything you need. Take you home. Hello, Billy. Oh, hi, Smitty. Rough trip? No, smooth as silk. What's all this about old man Denton being murdered? Yeah, last night. Any idea who did it? Not yet. The devil news sure seemed to hit him hard. Last night he was laughing and happy, glad to be coming home. You stayed over in Leadville last night, I suppose. Of course, just like we always do at the Engine Head Hotel. Passengers always eat there, don't they? Oh, sure. Best grub in town. A rich fella like Denton. 
I suppose he took supper in his room. No, he out with the rest of us. Insists on buying everybody around a drink. He's a free spender. I guess he can afford it, though. No question about that, Billy. I want all these men brought in for questioning. Smitty? Why? We've got to do something. I know how you feel about Denton, but you've got nothing to go on. What's your natural reaction when the first words out of a man's mouth is to tell you he has an ironclad alibi? I'm not trying to protect anybody, but you can't go around accusing a man of Claude Denton standing without proof. Not accusing, Chief. Questioning. Bring those men in. It's a waste of time. Come on, Hank. I guess I shouldn't have blamed the chief. The mayor and the city council were on his neck, and Mayor Adams owed his office to Claude Denton. We were carrying out orders. What else could we do? But I was sure getting fed up with chasing a lot of two-bit hoodlums who had nothing to do with Rex Denton's murder. I knew where I should be looking, but I had to find a way to do it without getting the chief on my neck again. Mr. Smith. Oh, hey, Mr. Smith, won't you come in? I'm sorry if I'm intruding, but I was in the neighborhood and I wanted to show you these announcements. Oh, no, not at all. That's very nice of you. So glad you get Mr. Hamilton to appear for us. He was glad to come. With him in the play, it's, it's just certain to be a success. Oh, dear, these last three weeks have been so trying. I, I don't know what I would have done without the play to keep my mind occupied. I'm so glad we decided to go on with the Claude. You're quite right, my dear. And now I must get back to the office. Oh, by the way, Smith, what's been happening with your investigation? Don't worry about it, Mr. Denton. We'll catch up with him. myself out, sir. Mrs. Denton, I hope it won't upset you too much if I try to clear up a couple of points about your husband's murder. Oh, no, no, not at all. Uh, won't you sit down, Mr. Smith? Did anyone besides you and your husband have a key to the house? Yes, Hannah has a key. But the thief came through the window. I don't think so. And there were only three keys. Why, well, no. Claude has always had a key, of course. Of course. You're stubborn as a mule, aren't you? I don't mean to be, Chief. But Claude Denton did benefit by his brother's death. And he did come up with that big alibi, unasked. And he did have a key to that house. And he was in Leadville at the time of the murder. Smitty, he's got an airtight alibi. At least a dozen people in Leadville saw him have his supper, go up to his room, and come back down for breakfast the next morning. Yeah. Come down to breakfast ten hours later. Are you trying to tell me that he could have ridden from, from Leadville to Denver and back again in one night? That's a good 120 miles. No horse could make that trip. Anybody ever try?
Sorry, Sonny. No hurry at all, old timer. Say, tell me, who's got the best horses in Leadville? Best horses in Leadville? Why, uh, Cape Goodnight's got the best horses in the whole darn territory. You sure about that? Sure about that? Why, of course, everybody knows that. I've heard of him. Where's he located? Right around that corner yonder. You got some fine horses, all right, Mr. Goodnight, but what I had in mind was something with a lot of speed and endurance. What about that sorrel gelding over there? Did I see you race him at the fair last fall? I sure did. Running the horse they ever own. That is, till somebody got in here one night, took him and rode him till he foundered. That's too bad. When did that happen? About three weeks ago now, I guess. Poor critter was nearly run to death. I've tried everything I can think of, but it hasn't helped him. Settles in their feet, doesn't it? They're never the same again. had plenty early foot, Smitty, but I never knew he had that much bottom. All right, you got me convinced. But what have we got to base charges on? Two pieces of mud and a tired horse in Leadville. We need some evidence that will stand up in court. I know we don't have enough evidence for conviction, Chief. But we do know Claude Denton's the man we're after. The first time you question Denton openly, he'll have the mayor kick me out of here and you'll be one jump ahead of me. Gotta get the mayor on our side. I thought of that. There's a get together at Mr. Denton's tonight to introduce J. Burton Hamilton. I wish you'd be there around eight, Chief. I think you might enjoy it. Mr. Hamilton wanted uh, all of you to see a scene from the play before he met. Oh, oh, how fortunate for us that he was able to come to Denver. I understand we're, uh, we're indebted to this young man for that. Yes, yes. Uh, Mrs. Adams, shall we sit with the bed? Thank you. Thank you. Well, oh, Mr. Denton, do you remember that Sorrel Gelden of good nights that I run your stallion at the fair last fall? He's ruined for life. Oh? I saw him when I rode over to Leadville today. Seems somebody stole him, rode him almost to death. Too bad. Yeah, it, uh, it happened the same night your brother was killed. Did you say you'd ridden to Leadville and back today, Tom? That's right, sir. I wouldn't have thought it possible. Well, I had to keep moving. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Smith, what part of the play is this? We're going to show you right now. Oh, good. <laughs> Well, since we have no curtain, the play.
Carefully, driver. I want to thank you again for helping us out, Mr. Hamilton. I was happy to be of service. Boy, you were sure great. How'd you make yourself look so much like that? No. Makeup is one of the most important tools in the actor's kit. And you're certainly an artist with it. Yeah, but that scheme you thought up to trap Denton wasn't so bad, Smitty. I'm afraid I can't take credit for that scheme, George. Someone else thought of it first about... How long ago was it, Mr. Hamilton? 266 years, to be exact, Mr. Smith. Though I'm quite sure Mr. Shakespeare didn't write it for the benefit of the Denver Police Department. <laughs> <laughs> the ladies of Denver lost interest in the play. And the old water trough still marks the spot where Colonel Slough's statue was to have stood.